Hey there, Robonzo here. My guest for this episode is Chris Coles of Musicians Unite. We talk about the inspiration for his musicians community, the evolving business aspects of that community, advice to musicians who get caught up in doing too much at once and avoiding burnout. Let's do it. This is the Unstarving Musicians Podcast. I'm your host, Robonzo. This podcast features conversations with me and indie music artists conversations intended to help other indie musicians be better at marketing, business, the creative process, and all the other things that empower us to do more of what we love. Make music. I want to say thanks to everyone who supports this podcast. The whole thing is intended to help independent musicians. Help them through a curation of expertise, expertise of other musicians and industry professionals. If you're loving the podcast, if you support the cause, visit unstarvingmusician.com forward slash crowd sponsor to learn about the various ways that you can offer your support. And by the way, if you're a listener of the podcast, I consider you a supporter, especially if you share it with a friend. Again, that's unstarvingmusician.com forward slash crowd sponsor to learn how you can get involved as a supporter. Have you heard of Banzoogle? They power websites for musicians around the world, including Grammy winners. Their easy-to-use system will get you online fast. They have tons of mobile-friendly templates to help you customize your design and site content. It's built for musicians by musicians. Banzoogle makes it easy to sell merch, grow your email list, integrate your socials, and they offer support from a musician-friendly team seven days a week. Plans are affordable. Go to banzoogle.com to start your 30-day free trial. Use the promo code Robonzo to get 15% off your first year. Again, that's Banzoogle.com, promo code Robonzo, R-O-B-O-N-Z-O. Chris and I were connected by a Facebook private group admin for a group called Musicians Unite. It is a Musicians Unite, that is, is a website based on community for musician education. Education that includes music lessons as well as resources on the business of music. Chris is a super passionate guy when it comes to supporting musicians, and he's working on the next generation of MusiciansUnite.com. We talk about this and a lot of sound advice for musicians. Here's me and Chris Coles. Chris, thank you for joining me today for this conversation on a Friday afternoon. I appreciate it. No problem. Thanks for having me. So um, tell me a little bit about the beginnings of Musicians Unite. What really sparked your interest in doing it to start with? Sure. I, uh, I went to college for music. I have a degree in music education. And, uh, and as I got out of college, I played and taught for about four or five years and uh, then got a little burned out for music and uh, stepped away for a couple of years. And uh, as I stepped away, the internet really took off, social media really took off from there, and uh, things really kind of changed on that whole landscape. And when I got back into playing again and doing more of music in my life, I was looking for a community, basically the community of musicians that popped up on the internet or out there somewhere that was informative and educational and really brought people together more easily. And I could not find that. And I I just thought I was missing it, quite honestly. Uh, I'm like, well, this had to have been developed in the last few years. I mean, there was websites that connected musicians. You could search for each other and put a couple little, you know, I play this and I live here kind of deals. But not only just the tools to connect each other, but the you know educational content and the camaraderie because mu- musicians go through so many of the same things and so many of the same struggles, and we can all learn from each other so well through that. And I just couldn't find that community. And I, you know, I talked to some music buddies of mine, and and we all agreed there really wasn't anything out there like that. And it kind of bothered me that there wasn't. So I just thought, you know, one day it kind of hit me like, well, maybe we should try to start something like that. And that's when Musicians Unite was basically born. And it was born out of Facebook page. And we had a little website at the time, just kind of like a splash page with a little bit of information. And and we just wanted to see if anybody else, cared to join a community such as this because i mean we had 
to nobody. I remember the first day we had like four likes in our Facebook page and we were thrilled with that uh, because it, we, we literally started from zero and uh, we just wanted to see if people had an interest too as joining us and uh, connecting in that way and having that type of musician community. And that's how it was born really. That's cool. And what year did it all start? This would have been probably about 2013, 2014. It's funny what was going on then versus now. I think the unstarving musician community and idea was only starting around 2016. And by then there's a lot of, and now, you know, there's a lot of communities and new ones coming up all the time. And I personally have just centered most of my content work around the podcast, but yeah, it kind of blew up, didn't it? <laughs> it really did. It really did. I mean, I it we started with a very simple, basic website just to kind of have a website and our Facebook page. And what we try to do is kind of cover the gamut. And, and in a day that so someone follows our Facebook page and that day, we'd like to give them a little education. We'd like to make them think, talk amongst themselves, figure out some solutions to some problems that are we're all dealing with today and as, as the music industry changes constantly we're all dealing with new things i mean 10 years ago nobody was you know probably doing a whole lot of home recording and now everybody has a home studio and trying to put out their own products and trying to learn how to best use instagram and facebook and twitter and there's so many challenges out there that change daily that to coming together and having a daily conversation with each other is a really good thing because it educates us all and we can learn, go, Oh, somebody says, well, this, this worked great for me. And somebody said, well, this worked terribly for me. And we, uh, just a little bit of information can go a long way in trying to better your career because you're not only a musician anymore, you're, you're sound recording, you're an educator, you're a social media expert and a marketing expert. You, you wear all these hats as a modern musician mostly because you're trying to do it all yourself. That can be a real challenge. So to be able to have a place that not only you know, brings people together to learn how to play their instruments well together or connect with each other and finding the right people, but then, you know, okay, we have a band. How do we market it? How do we record our new CD? What's the best way? What's the biggest bang for our buck to get our name out there? And Should we stream our music? And if so, what? platform it it's crazy so doing to put a community together like this we hope that we can continue to educate people as well as bring them together and help them more easily connect and uh, education has definitely always been a cornerstone for, for me as i said i was a music education degree and i always love to pass on some information that helps people be a better player or uh you know, better band member or whatever it may be that they're looking to improve upon. Yeah, sure. Earlier you mentioned that you hit a point of getting burned out on doing music, and I assume that involved teaching and maybe some other things. What exactly took you to a point where you needed a break? Yeah, that's a good question. And I don't think you'd find any probably, anybody probably more passionate about, especially playing, than, than I was for, for many years. And now still back to it in, in many ways. But what burned me out was what we were just discussing was I was in a band, I was in several different groups, but finally got a band together that I had started. And uh, I was trying to do basically all that I was booking it. I was promoting it. I was the one setting up studio time and doing everything with it. And we really had some good success here. I'm living in the central Pennsylvania area and we had some nice regional success and we had probably a, an album of originals together and, and ready to record and we had some, some really nice gigs and within probably three months at our peak success time, it just crumbled with guys going to another band and some internal strikes that we've all been through as musicians and it just fell apart within a few months and that was about three years of working on that nonstop. and I just I was done <laughs> I was very frustrated I was I was just tired not only of trying to 
put all the, the band stuff together, but just also playing. And in a way, the business side burned me out from the playing side, and that scared me. And that's something that we always try to push through on Musicians United is don't let the business side ruin your passion and love for playing music or listening to music. Because I didn't even really want to listen to music, I have to be honest. One of the other guys in the band put another group together, and uh, it was a few months after that, and he called me and he said, you know, I'm a drummer by trade. He said, oh, I want you to play drums in the new group, and we got gigs booked, and I was like, I, I can't, I can't. <laughs> and he said, uh, sure, sure you can. That's uh, we get, I got another month, so I'll call you in a month. And he called me a month later, and he's like, you know, hey, we're going to rehearse, and we got stuff booked. And I'm like, I'm, I'm done for a while. And I mean, he, he was blown away, but I'm like, I just have to step back from it. And uh, it really was not the playing, but everything else that went on top of that. And uh, that really kind of scared me because all my life, all I wanted to do was listen to music or play music and practice and get better and get a gig and join a band. And now I wanted to really have nothing to do with any of it for a little while. And that took me by surprise. And I really needed that break, which was a help. And I came back to it with a renewed vision and uh, a renewed passion for sure. But I'd like to stop anybody else from even needing a two or three year break if possible, because it shouldn't get to that point. And today I think we see this more and more with musicians because of what I was just speaking about is you wear so many hats. uh, It's very easy to get burned out on trying to do absolutely everything. So to try to get people more information to maybe do things a little bit more easily or maybe to try to on a cheaper budget outsource some things to some other people or find some other talent in the band today you not only bring to the table what you play but you also can bring to the table oh i'm very good graphic artist or i'm great with social media i'm a really great marketer or i know a lot about recording what you bring to the table is far more than just playing your instrument well so if you can collaborate with a group of people that helps take the load off of just one person trying to do it all, that can really help alleviate the burned out thing that happened to me. Yeah, I've, you know, 100% experienced all of those things and 100% agree with how you kind of wrapped it up there. And probably every one of those points that you hit on have been talked about in one episode or another, sometimes based on my own experience or uh, sometimes a guest sharing similar experience, but I really appreciate you talking about it at length that way for maybe someone who's dropping in on the podcast for the first time, or maybe since the last time they listen, they're kind of hitting a little burnout too. And I don't suppose we, you know, I don't focus a lot of time on it. Although, you know, it's funny. I was, I did have a conversation for a second podcast that I run that's not music related, but oddly enough, it was a one of the themes of the conversation was stress management. And in the back of my head, I was thinking about, because I'm always, you know, like independent musicians are such small business people. So the, the challenges are very, they're very similar. They're almost the same with few nuances, but that's good stuff. You know, one of the things going back to the community and the Facebook page, I'm reminded that, you know, maybe for, for people who are not in a group like this or, they're in a few and they're not really engaged. One of the really beautiful things about them on top of the fact that people like you and John and all the other people that moderate that group are are helping to keep it alive and keep it in good health is that people like me and your other members can go join these communities and we can help one another, uh, even if it's just dropping in once in a while. And there's always someone asking some question and inevitably it's going to be something you've had some experience with. And even if it's something as small as a word of encouragement or doesn't even have to be music related, as you know, because sometimes it's things kind of related to an emotional state or maybe a conversation that's related to gigs or something. And you just, you need somebody to kind of give you a different perspective. And I, that's one of the things that I think is so great about the Facebook communities anyway there are certainly, you know, we can all, always talk about some of the downsides of it. But I mean, if we just genericize it for a moment and say any community that's online like this, where you have a group of people helping each other, I think that's a really, do you see a lot of that within your group or do you have any like personal stories or experience with that? We do. We do. We see a lot of that. It's amazing how many, I love to, I read most of the comments 
uh, on our Facebook page and then also our Facebook group and then also on our website when people comment on, on articles and videos that we share. And one of the things that I find so inspiring that keeps all of us going for sure is somebody that will say, you know what, I almost quit last year or I did quit last year last month i i walked away and and then i found your page i found your group i was reading some a post that somebody made and now today i picked up my guitar again for the first time in a month or in a year that's huge i mean that's life-changing somebody may have walked away for longer or may not have come back and uh they found the group and and found that other people are having the same issues and and like you said emotionally it's just to be there to pick each other up because it's a difficult bit. It's not easy to be a musician. It's just, it's not, there's some amazing things about it. And you know, life music is a life well spent. And I think the good far outweighs the bad in the, in the grand scheme of things, but in spurts in your life, it can be very difficult. It can be very painful. It can be feeling like you constantly have to restart or reinvent yourself or, figure out what road you want to go down next and our brand new website that'll be out in early 2020 here coming up will just is is a neat thing because we're going to have it set up where musicians will be able to custom build their own personal profiles and it will show where they're at in their current musical careers and more easily allow people to find others with that same with what they're looking for in whatever instrument they're looking for, whatever band they're looking for. And then they will be able to become friends and connect with each other and kind of like our Facebook community, but just so much more that they'll be able to do and customize for themselves and their own profiles. And, you know, we're really hoping that people jump over from our Facebook community onto the new website when it comes out and just not only find friends locally and musicians locally that they'll be able to connect with, but musicians all over the world that are in the same boat and just like our, our Facebook page and say, Hey, I, yeah, I went through this. Hang in there, man. It's, it's going to be okay. It's tough now, but I tried this and I did that and I got back on my feet and uh, you know, all of us that work on it. Uh, when John King is our head web developer and, and also in the group, but we have Joel Young, and Steve Haney and Nate Luttrell and Larry Haney and, those guys do so much on a daily basis that we couldn't do it without them for sure. But we all get inspired by each other. And just that's why I think we love to do what we do because you read these comments and it's not only do you're happy that the members of your group get inspired and, and learn, but I can't tell you how much I've learned from everybody in the group. I'm just a member of the group. We're giving the people the platform to come together and do this. But then at the end of the day, I'm just, a regular old musician just like everybody else who loves the group for what it's giving me and you know a good laugh or hearing some really great music that's out there that I wouldn't be able to hear anywhere else from members and learning all little different tricks and tips and it's been great I mean I've learned so much on my own and then to hear that other people are learning and or not quitting or sticking with it or hanging tough in those hard times any little bit that we're able to help to me is just very inspirational. I noticed uh, in looking at the website, I thought I saw a couple of familiar faces and one of them just from recent YouTube exploration. And I can't remember his name and you can tell me maybe, I know you probably got a lot going on, but I know he goes kind of by a brand name of the guitar sage, but I can't remember his first name, but. Oh, Eric Andre. Okay. Yeah. So I guess the, point of the question or, or the sharing the thought or observation is that it looks like you have a, a number of contributors to maybe in the community too but contributors to the content for the website like in that case I think I was looking at a video slider thing is that how you kind of how you guys are building some of the content by identifying some other good educators or other good musicians who are putting content that your community would enjoy Absolutely. That's exactly it. We have uh, we have a lot of good uh, – Jens Larson, who's an excellent jazz guitarist and educator. Steven Taylor, an excellent drummer. Eric Andreas, with your guitar sage. Uh, the Duncan Richardson does a lot of music theory for us. Uh, Sean Daniel is out there on guitar. 
Phil McKnight, who runs an awesome community called Know Your Gear, who uh, just digs into all the different guitars and amps and really digs into all the gear to help people. We just picked up David Aaron Katz, who's a professional vocalist, who's been doing some really great vocal content for us. Uh, Josh Foss Green is a bass guy. Simon Warner is a piano guy. And some of these people we reached out to, and some of these people reached out to us and said, I, I love what you're doing. And basically, we found the common ground that we all liked the material that they were putting out. They're putting out great educational content, entertaining, but also very educational. And not only just here's how you play your instrument, but I always want to focus on music theory because I think it's important that musicians try to, to learn a little bit about theory, even if it's just some bare bones basics. It'd be very helpful. So, you know, picking a mic for this type of gig or for this type of recording, or uh, like we talked about sometimes, it's a video about how to get through something emotionally and how difficult it can be if somebody quits your band or a gig gets canceled or any of those types of things. These educators were putting out more than just here's how you play your instrument. And uh, it really was a good fit for what Musicians Unite is all about. And we've been able to share their content and get them some more viewers and members for what they're doing and promote their websites and, and products. And then they also in turn, tell people about what we're doing. And it's been a really great collaboration that uh, continues to grow. And we've actually, we added in the last two weeks, three new people on the list that we're going to be rolling some things out with. So it's, they'd all reached out to us. So it's been really cool that we've had these educators that we admire and really already enjoy their content reaching out to us saying, hey, can I be a part of this? So it's really an excellent marriage for both sides. Cool. And for those who, you know, there are a lot of musicians I'm acquainted with and some that I talk to that are wanting to develop their own communities or create value as, you know, value services or value products as part of their whole music machine or business machine, if you will. For Musicians Unite, I I don't, I don't know if you guys are a nonprofit or do, are you a business? And if so, well, in either case, I mean, I can ask it from a business perspective, but you could, if it is a nonprofit, you can kind of talk about it from that angle. But what are the, um, I guess, business goals for Musicians Unite? Say, you, maybe you can talk a little bit to when or how they those goals started and also to what you're looking ahead at. You've mentioned the forthcoming website and other other things that you're looking forward to from, from a business perspective that'll help you maintain a sustainable community. And for those of you that are kind of, you know, needing some income for all that you're putting in, how that's going to work out for you. Sure. Yeah. We basically started out with a uh, no business platform uh, because we weren't sure if anybody would even care what we were doing and uh, what we were trying to put together. And as we've, we're almost at 300,000, people right now uh so as we decided to this website is currently out there is essentially our second website and uh when we decided to put a full-blown third website out there that offers all these tools and abilities for musicians to come and join and build profiles and search and connect and share and comment and all that kind of good stuff we're looking at the future as several different revenue streams, advertising through the website, affiliate marketing campaigns. We have everybody that we've been basically working with educationally has their own websites, has their own books and CDs and DVDs and all these educational pieces out there that we're looking to help them promote and sell. And also once things really kind of get off the ground with the new site, when People are joined and our database continues to grow with a number of profiles is small membership type fees as well. We're looking at where you can we're going to be able to do more through the site if you're able to, uh, you know, have a small membership fee. So we're looking at a few different ways to create revenue streams because you're right. We're getting to the point where we've never asked members for any money whatsoever. We sold a couple of shirts and hats and things like that so far, but our website currently has no advertising on it. 
And the reason we did this was, as you know, people are coming after musicians today pretty hard for all different types of scams. Some, some things are certainly legitimate, a lot are, are not, but they're always after you for money here, money there. And we just wanted to put something out that was a safe haven from all of that. That, you know, look, we're not asking for any money. We're not making any money on advertisements. This is musicians coming together and putting our resources together to give you a place to feel at home and safe or you know in our group we don't allow any solicitations we don't we just kind of wanted to build a safe haven from that at first and since it's grown to such a large size yes we're going to have to look for revenue streams when the new site rolls out you know there's so much that goes into uh, server space and you know the costs that are incurred with, with running something of this size. So initially it'll be uh, advertisements and affiliate marketing campaigns and with the people that we work with. And then from there it will lead into some small membership type fees, something that's cheaper than anything else that's out there, as we've discussed in our business meetings, but is would be certainly enough to keep us rolling to be able, because we want to, what we're rolling out early in the year is just the tip of the iceberg. We have so many ideas and, and tools that we want to roll out and to be able to do it, we just, we need the funding. So you know, we're looking at ways to get this funding, to be able to put it all, a, a large majority of it back into the products to continue to improve the community and the tools we're giving people. And, you know, we'd like to also come over into real world things. We've discussed, uh, you know, once we get enough members that to do some, uh, some local shows, maybe musicians unite featured uh, night somewhere with bands from that are community members and those types of things and do some real world connection and not just internet connection or, or smartphone connection, but real world connection that boils over to shows and uh, master classes and educational groups that come together. And uh, we have so many ideas that to, to do all this is definitely going to need some funding. So slow and steady wins the race. So we're looking to put the new site out and start with those few revenue streams I discussed and then, then see where it goes. Yeah, the uh, possibilities are limitless. <laughs> they are, and uh, it, it's one of those things that nothing has quite worked the way we thought it would. Is And I'm not, I don't mean that negatively. It's just, you know, you think you're going to do something and it's going to be taken one way, and it kind of turns into something else. So what we've always done is have an eye towards the future and ideas the way we want to do things, but then also to keep a very open mind and listen to our members. I mean, that's where all of this is coming from. This is why we're building the website and doing it the way we are doing it, because this is what we've heard the members, you know, in our community say for the last couple of years, oh, this would be cool to have this. It'd be great to be able to do that. We're just essentially creating what we've heard everybody else talk about. You made me think of a, a dilemma that all entrepreneurial people and, you know, musicians included are faced with and your communities, those that are working to sustain it phase two. We talked about all these possibilities and great kudos to you guys, you know, that you really have a focus on listening to community members to help guide you. But I know in the, you know, marketing and online business world, like in so many others, there are just so many things you can focus on all at once and not do many of them very well, right? I am sure this comes up, I'm confident it comes up very frequently with musicians because as you you know, when we, at the outset of our conversation, you were talking about all the changes and all the hats that independent musicians are having to wear and on top of trying to be good at their craft. Do you have any uh, fresh on your mind discussions or threads along these lines that you've had with musicians or that you guys as a group at, at uh, Musicians Unite have discussed that musicians struggle with, you know, with so many things to be focused on? And, and if so, you know, what's your... You know, number one or you know top few tips for them to to get their arms around what's going on and not get too caught up in the shiny object syndrome it is it's so difficult and and the reason we kind of focused on musicians is there's some, a lot of other communities out there that pull in other people from the industry you know you can not only join our their community as a musician but all you know lights and sound and if you need a manager and if you need a booking agent, if you, you need a marketing person. And 
this goes back to when I was getting back into uh, playing again and I was finding that and I was getting so frustrated because I didn't know, because like you said, it's so many things coming at you at once. Like, well, geez, what, what all do I, I guess I need all these people <laughs> to, to, to make all of this happen. So the focus of Musicians Unite first and foremost is a community for musicians. We're not, uh, when the website rolls out, it's not going to also be for lighting people and sound people and people of the industry. And that, that, that's important. But the first thing you need to do is focus on your own play, what you can control. And that's your own playing, how good you are, how much practice you put in, how seriously you take it, how much study you put into your craft. And then also connecting with the right musician. You have no use for a sound guy or a great lighting guy or a booking agent if you don't have a group of musicians that's together and on the same page. It's like any other relationship. You find a guitarist for your band and he wants to play 20 shows a month and your band is looking to do three or four locally. That's not going to be a good fit overall. You're looking for different things. So before you need all of the rest of that that's going on in the business, you need to be able to play as best you possibly can, which you can control, and then connect with the right musicians for the project you're looking to be a part of, which you certainly can control to an extent by making an effort to, to network. We always put a network with everybody you possibly can in your area, online, get out, see shows, tell people in your area you're looking for something, you know, exhaust all networking opportunities. So you certainly have control to that to an extent. And that's where you start. Then once you have your craft down and you can play and you can play well and you can play well with the group of musicians you're now with and it's the right group of musicians for what you're looking to do. You all have the same similar goals, hopefully, and similar mindsets of where you'd like to take the group. Now you can get into that world of, okay, maybe we need to be working with a booking agent or a manager, or now it's time to look at booking some studio time to get our original songs down and all those other aspects of the business. And I think what takes people away from the things they can control is all these other outside business you know, things going on that you don't need right away, but they're pushed at you. And I mean, everybody's needed at some point, but you're not at that point. It's nothing but you know, frustrating and aggravating and, and just confusing. <laughs> so we're trying to take a little bit of that confusion out of there and say, all right, learn to play well, dedicate yourself to study and you know getting as good as you can at your craft and then connect with the right musicians for what you're looking for i mean you can you can jam with everybody and learn from everybody but when it comes down to saying all right i'm going to be in a band and uh here's what i want to do you have to figure out the dedication level that you're looking for the travel distance you're willing to travel the time you're willing to commit you know i know a lot of great bands and some play once a month some play you know a couple of times a year some play you know, 15 to 20 shows a month. And it's, it's, they're all very good musicians, but they all have a different level of commitment and time constraints that they're able to put into. So none of those musicians would really work together in the same group very well, even though musically they might be able to, and playing-wise they might, but uh, there's a lot of other factors that they wouldn't. So I would say concentrate on what you can control, your your own craft and how good you are at it. And networking with as many musicians as you possibly can and creating a list of people that would be you feel would be a good fit for yourself musically and also creatively and time wise and and your vision for the future wise and start trying to wrangle those people together and if that all fits or if you find a band where you fit in well and you're the one new one coming in now you can open up the doors to all those other things that you may need to do business wise and that's uh, really great advice and just speaks to the theme of uh, identifying what it is that uh, you should be focusing on at a given point in time and relying on other, others to help you figure that out on occasion, maybe on, on most occasions. <laughs> Getting an outside perspective is so valuable. And then just diving in deep on that one thing for a while until you've got it figured out or for some reason you need to make an adjustment like maybe that one thing isn't the one thing obviously the one you were just talking about is going to be a one thing for everyone at some point but maybe when we get into the marketing or online front 
you know, there's a lot of trial and error, but uh, I guess point being, you know, back to what you're saying is uh, focus on, you know, what, what needs to be better now and uh, try not to spread yourself too thin, right? Absolutely. Don't spread yourself too thin at all. We all have 24 hours in a day and we can all can only control ourselves. First and foremost, be the best musician that you can and be the best band member that you can. You know, be all the things that go into being a great musician and have nothing to do with playing in a lot of ways, being on time and having the right attitude. And uh, I'd done an interview one time myself with uh, Kenny Aronoff, and Kenny was the drummer of uh, John Mellencamp back in the day and has played with everybody since then. And, and you know, I, we were talking about how he got the amount of gigs that he has gotten over the years and just basically being able to work with everybody, being on time, being dependable, being, you know, be able to lay track down as quickly as possible, knowing that people can rely on him. And uh, that comes through with all of us. So, you know, concentrate on what you can control, being a good band member, being a good musician, and just take it one day at a time. There's no need to worry about a booking agent if you don't have a band together yet. Or you might wind up a month from now joining a band and they have a booking guy and they have a sound and light guy. And now that you, you stepped into that. So to stress over those types of things before they're ready doesn't do anybody any good. So focus on what you can do today, what needs to be done today. And amazingly, chipping away at that over time, you really make an awful lot of progress. And you can do it and still have fun with playing and still have fun booking your band or networking and finding things. It should be fun. That can get so lost on so many of us that we just get in, in the habit of just, it's always more doing. Well, I have to practice, then I have to try to book some gigs, and then I have to try to call the guys so I can get practice scheduled and then we have if you're lost in the doing and you don't even and you know you're playing at a gig and then you're through your mind is going oh, i gotta call this club back because i gotta see if we, you know, you're in the middle of the show all you wanted to do was play for people now you're playing for people and your mind is somewhere else you're not enjoying that so just take it slow take it moment by moment do what you can do to, I, I think a great thing is to write a list down today what can you do well i can practice and then i can go down to this club and see this band play tonight and introduce myself and uh that's what i can do musically today to become better and that's that's that day. and enjoy that day and then tomorrow i can practice again and then the, you know a couple of me and a couple of guys are going to get together and jam and that's tomorrow what I can do musically. And then the next day I can call a couple of clubs and they're, you know, still doing that open mic night or just take it a day at a time and chip away a day at a time and enjoy all of the process. And that's what happened to me. I got so lost in the doing that it just made me not like doing any of it for a while. And that should not be. It should be fun. And in the end, you should enjoy all aspects I mean, it's not all going to be you know, sunshine and roses. We, we know that. But in general, we shouldn't be one stressed out ball of nerves <laughs> all the time trying to do what we love to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what do you do when you're not working on Musicians Unite and you're not teaching or playing music? Uh, I enjoy a lot of things. I do, I, I fish a lot. And I live in Pennsylvania. There's a lot of uh, good waters here to fish, so I, I really enjoy nature. And yeah, nature is is the best way to to get back to sanity. So I love to try to be in nature as much as possible. Uh, go fishing. Go for a walk. Uh, actually, I, I enjoy playing poker, and uh, I'm not too far from casinos here in Pennsylvania. And I love to go out and socialize and play some cards and talk to some people and, and do that. And uh, family time, and uh, two great nephews, and my parents, and my brother, and we all get together pretty regularly and do a lot of different family activities and good friends, and you just basically what everybody else does probably. But I try to keep a, a good balance of it. You know, we can make more money, but we can never make more time. Yeah. And we don't know how much time we have left. So it's, it's running a business or a band or whatever it may be is important, but we can't forget that 
the people that we love, the people that are around us, our family members, our friends, that's really number one. So to make the time, again, musicians can kind of forget that. They forget, but get lost in that shuffle a little bit, because let's face it, when you're working, that's when everybody else is socializing. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> nights and weekends when everybody else is going out and hanging out, you got a rehearsal or you got a gig, you are the entertainment for the social night out. So I think it is important for musicians to be able to have that time to say, all right, you know, when you're not playing to make sure to get out and sometimes not only, okay, you get out and see a band, but I, I always had a rule, especially when I was really busy playing and teaching one day a week, I didn't do anything with music. It didn't always work that way, but in general, I try to take maybe one day a week off or one day every other week off and not do anything with music at all. Not even really listen too much to music. Go fishing, go set up lunch with a friend, go set up family time. I, I love, I'm a big Phillies fan, unfortunately, and we get to a lot of Phillies games. <laughs> so get out and, you know, go to a Phillies game and uh, or a baseball game or a Little League game or whatever it may be. Uh, that you enjoy going and doing. I try to get out of music maybe one day a week and, and to get out of it, but kind of get my head out of and go do something else. And, and that always really helped me come back, even just one day off, a little bit fresher than I was before. Musicians do get lost in that because you are working when everybody else is out playing. And it's what you love, but it's important when there's you don't have a show or you don't have rehearsal, just you know maybe put the instrument down and go talk to somebody, go take a walk, go watch the ocean, go take in a game, something to just get away from that energy a little bit. Cause it'll be there when you're time to come back. And again, that's something I didn't do in my pre burnout days is I just always add it constantly. And that's not healthy. <laughs> no matter what you love, you need a little bit of a break away from it. This is true. I um, hopefully didn't wait a little too long, but yesterday I, was kind of set up, you know, had psyched myself. I was going to work kind of late. And um, my wife's traveling this week. She comes back tonight. But uh, so I've been, you know, at home with the with the dog and the cat. And I decided instead, after I had a, a business meeting, I came home and worked for a bit. But earlier, I made the decision to call a couple friends and invite them to a place that they're new in the area where I live. And uh, they'd heard of this place called Mangalore Lodge that hosts music and apparently has a cool vibe and, and, uh, I happened to know that they were doing, uh, featuring music last night and, and, uh, they're big in craft beers and, and they've got a, a nice kitchen. So we, we went there and, uh, I didn't work and took a little time to recharge. So, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, you know, I kind of had the signs were like, you know what, I'm almost to the point where I'm burned out for the week and that, that's not good. I probably waited a little too long, but you just have a lot of really great, experiences to share. I, w I want to say advice, but I don't know why uh, that sometimes come across, comes across the wrong way, but you, you are really full of great tips, um, insights and experience. I share a lot of them with you. It's kind of funny as I'm listening. I'm like, well, this guy could have written a chapter in my book. No problem. <laughs> but, um, people can find out more about you and everything that you and your team have going on at musiciansunite.com and the growing fandom of the Facebook page that we've been talking about is for at Musicians Unite. There is a, a private group that you can get led to, uh, I'm sure, from that page, but uh, certainly the website will tell you just about everything uh, that you want to know about Chris and, and company. And, and, hey, man, I really appreciate you again for taking time out for me today. It's been fun. No problem. Thank you for reaching out and uh, taking the time and uh, willing to help to get the word out there a bit, and uh, we really appreciate it. You got it, man. I wish the best of luck to you guys, and I'll I'll definitely stay in touch, and I'll be watching watching what you're doing in the year coming. Please do. Sounds great. Hey, thanks again for listening. If you are loving the podcast, please visit unstarvingmusician.com forward slash crowd sponsor to learn about the various ways that you can offer your support. And again, if you're a listener, I consider you a supporter, especially if you shared it with a friend. Thank you. Have you heard of Banzoogle? Yep, they're powering websites for musicians all over the world. Their easy system will get you online fast. They have tons of mobile-friendly templates to help you custom design your site and content. It's built for musicians by musicians. They make it easy to sell merch, grow your email list, integrate your socials, and they offer support from a 
musician-friendly team seven days a week. Plans are affordable. Go to bandzoogle.com to start a free trial, and be sure to use the promo code Robonzo to get 15% off your first year. That's bandzoogle.com, promo code Robonzo, R-O-B-O-N-Z-O. Look for show notes and links to most everything mentioned in this episode at unstarvingmusician.com forward slash podcast. Thanks so much for listening. With a whole lot of gratitude, peace, love, and more cowbell.